Hello and welcome to the video in which I will react to states and territories of India, which was requested. And yeah, let's right now start this video. Hey everybody, before we start, this video is sponsored by a good sponsor that we found, one that I actually believe in and personally endorse, Cetera, it's a geography quiz game. We'll get back to it later. But first, as you guys know, um, I can also recommend this. It's a good game. I played it a lot and learned through this. It's the countries of the world. Well, this is a filler week video and by popular request we are doing the states of India now the thing about India is that it's actually kind of broken up quite a few times since independence from the original 14 states mostly because of the people groups or the languages stuff like that so before we get into this just keep in mind I am not Indian I have never even been to India so in order to make this video I had to talk to a lot of you guys I've read a lot of your emails and comments and I compiled as much information as I possibly could based off of what you guys the Indian geography peeps have said so kind of you know if I get anything wrong it's you know kind of your fault so let's just jump into it the 29 states and the seven union territories Andhra Pradesh the capital Amaravati now this is an interesting state because it kind of has like the fastest growing GDP in all of India over 16% in the past few years and uh, this building looks very interesting um, at least from the picture I see, I see it here over here they speak Telugu and this guy wrote this play which is kind of considered like the most prominent Telugu play in all of Indian history otherwise they're famous for the Kuchipudi dance one of the eight classical styles of Indian dance and uh yeah they have great beaches and caves Arunachal Pradesh capital Itangar this is the region that's kind of disputed with China although it is administered by India in order to get in as a foreigner you will need a restricted area permit otherwise culturally it kind of takes cues from Tibet you know the whole like Buddhism thing going on there's quite a few Buddhists here people here are super Super friendly, they're famous for their wood carvings and their carpets. Assam, capital Dispur. Now if you watch the India episode, you'll know that I talked about the seven sisters in northeast India. Assam is kind of like the big sister. This place is known for disputably having the nicest tea and silk. And the silks are kind of made based off of what they actually feed the silkworms. It's interesting. They're also known for preserving the incredibly rare one-horned Indian rhinoceros. And uh, the longest bridge opened up in 2017 over here as well. Assam, it's awesome. Bihar, capital Patna. This is kind of like the Buddha state. Lots of famous sites for Buddhism. Supposedly they have the Bodhi tree that Siddhartha Gautama sat under. Otherwise on the Hindu side I was told that they're very big on Ram and Krishna. I was also told that they're very hardworking people. Chhattisgarh, capital Naya Raipur. From what I was told this is kind of like a somewhat militant-ish type of area. They're known for producing a lot of coal and they are kind of one of the poorest states. And there is a noticeable community of people that kind of have Maoist slash Naxal ideologies and it kind of clashes with the main Indian government but otherwise generally the people here are just nice but there's just a little bit of controversy that's all. Goa this is the Vegas of India. It was a former uh, um, I first didn't even saw it on the map it was very small um, and <laughs> I saw it it's a, it's a left side. Portuguese colony and uh, now it's known for having a ton of Russian tourists that just flock over and take over everything. Great beaches, bars, and cool things happening. But the funny thing is the people in Goa, like the actual citizens, are pretty chill and normal. It's just the tourists that give it the crazy vibe. But yeah, Goa, it's like where everybody wants to go to for a vacation. You want to go uh, to go, uh, yeah, yeah. Gujarat, capital Gandhinagar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is from here. Now this place is famous for a few things. First of all, it's kind of like a desert and they have one of the largest salt deserts in the world. They have this forest which has the last of the Asiatic lions in the world. Oh, I forgot, Gandhi was also from here. They are voted the number one ease of business state in India. The people here are very good at doing business and they're really good at trading. Also, no alcohol is allowed in this state, but that's okay because they go to one of the union territories that we'll talk about later. But yeah, basically, Basically, uh, people that can handle money really well come from Gujarat. Haryana, capital Chandigarh, which is shared with Punjab. Long story. Haryana, I was told, is kind of like the rougher, tougher brother of Punjab. It's known as like the wrestling and boxing capital of India. And they have one of the highest male to female sex ratios, like there's more men than women. And this place is famous for having a lot of people that are hired to become bodyguards for other people in other states. Like this is the bodyguard state. Himachal Pradesh, which has two capitals, the summer one, Shimla, 
and the winter one, Dharamshala. This is kind of known as the state that hosts the Dalai Lama, but it's actually kind of known as like the beautiful holiday destination that Indians love to visit. It's known as the abode of snow, one of the snowiest places in all of India. Culture-wise, again, they take a lot of cues from their Tibetan neighbors up north. But yeah, uh, cool state, lots of culture, lots of beautiful landscape, uh, people like to visit for, for uh, vacations. Jammu and Kashmir also has two capitals, the summer one, yeah, well, Jammu and Kashmir, I already, already heard in the Indian episode, and yeah, it is disputed. And um, from what I heard between Pakistan and India, yeah. Srinagar, and the winter one, Jammu. I have to be very, very careful with this one. Why? Because if you watch the India episode, you'll know that Pakistan and China and India are all kind of vying for ownership of this one area. Basically, the area that is kind of operated by India, we'll talk about. Besides Lakshadweep, it has the highest percentage of Muslims in all of India at about 68%. It used to be ruled under these princely states. And it's funny because, like, the people here are so nice and welcoming, even though they've gone through, like, multiple wars. But yeah, it's like the world's most beautiful conflict zone. Jarka, <laughs> capital Ranchi. It's kind of like uh, the sibling of Chhattisgarh. A lot of the people here kind of also have the same Maoist ideology. However, it also does have one of the holiest sites in Jainism. Well, how do you pronounce it? Shik the Shikharji, known for having a lot of minerals that they mine, and uh, famous cricketer Dhoni came from here as well. Karnataka, capital Bengaluru, formerly known as Bangalore. The capital, Bengaluru, is kind of known as like the Silicon Valley of India. So many IT companies and startups are coming out in this city, and they have the lowest unemployment rate in all of India at less than 1%. Otherwise, they're known for having the Hampi ruins, and uh, they speak Kannada, or uh, is that how you Uh... All of these um, different languages which look for me very re weird, um, uh, but look very beautiful. I mean, they it's it's hard for me to probably learn, um, but it, they look beautiful. I was told it's pronounced Canada, but some people have said Canada. Like what is it? Kerala, capital Tiruvananthapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. Say that three times fast. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. This place is kind of famous for being known as the spot where Jesus' apostle Thomas kind of landed and spread the Christian gospel. And today uh, you see kind of like a lot of Catholics and Christians and they all kind of speak Malayalam. A little bit of a tongue twister. Say it with me. Malayalam. It's not Malayam or Malayam. It's Malayalam. Backwater is a very famous place. And yeah, Kerala is kind of like the state that's like doing pretty well overall in a lot of things like literacy and HDI and all that other stuff. All the other states are like, hmm, maybe we can kind of take pointers from Kerala. Madhya Pradesh, capital Bhopal, the heart of India, the history state with tons of religious and historical sites. You have the Bimbetka rock shelters. You have the uh, Kajuraho temples, which kind of depicts all those, uh, you know, Kama Sutra sexually explicit images going on. A lot of you have told me to mention the Bhopal gas tragedy that happened in 1984. And I was also told that the people here seem to be really big devotees of Ganesh. Maharashtra, capital Mumbai. This is the richest state and the second most populous, third largest in area. It's kind of like the New York and Los Angeles of India. It's like the economic hub and the entertainment hub. Bollywood is over here. Tons of people flock over to pursue their dreams. I mean, aside from all that though, they do have a lot of like Marathi forts and like historical sites as well. But yeah, Maharashtra is kind of like the central nucleus that everything kind of builds off off of and expands outwards from. It pushes India forward. Manipur, capital Impal. This is one of the seven sister states. Um, Mumbai is um, also um, one of the, the largest cities in the world, I think. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the people here, just like all the other Seven Sisters, have a little bit more of like an East Asian look to them. They're known for having their own distinct hill tribes. Five-time world amateur boxing champion Mary Kom came from here. They're also known for having these cool floating islands. This looks very interesting. Huh? Hmm? Floating islands and boxing women. Meghalaya, capital Shillong. This place is known as the abode of rain, and they're kind of like the water people of India. These two villages get the most rain in all of India. They have really interesting matrilineal tribes, and they have really cool foggy hills. But yeah, cool hill people with their own customs. Ah, one of those tree bridges. I have seen this in another video already.
Mizoram's and uh, the water people. Mizoram, capital Izov, the land of blue mountains. This is the most forested state in all of India at over 90%. Pretty eco-friendly, they even have eco-tours. It's kind of like the Costa Rica of India. The people here are just really chill and they just kind of like sell their handicrafts at the market. All right, so that's the halfway point. Just very quickly before we move on to the next one, just want to say thank you to Cetera, our sponsor for this video. Cetera is a really cool geography learning game that you can actually download on Android or iOS at this link right here. Or you can just go to the website and play. There are tons of games you can choose from here. You got a lot of things like regions, physical landscapes, capitals. You can even custom create your own game. And they actually made a Geography Now game. Not only that, but the game also comes in 34 different languages. It's really fun. I totally recommend you guys check it out. Go to online.cetera.com. Yeah, um, go to use his links. Um, this link. Maybe it helps him still. It's an older video, but yeah, I also played it very much. I can also recommend it. Land, capital Kohima. This is like the most Christian state of India, but they also still kind of retain their own indigenous tribal cultures and customs. Famous for the Hornbill Festival. And it's funny because like they're very westernized, but they know that the tourists come in and so they kind of have to like put on their traditional costumes and put on a show. But it's like, hey, eh, whatever, eh, whatever makes us money. Odisha, formerly known as Orissa. Capital Bhubaneswar, known as the land of cyclones. It's also known for being like the ISRO's launch site for their satellite programs. This is one of the Three states that never broke up throughout all of Indian statehood history. It's kind of known as like the state that bridges the north and south. They speak the Oriya language. They have an amazing wetland and mangrove park where you can find like tigers and elephants. Probably the most famous landmark being the Sun Temple of Konark. Punjab, capital Chandigarh, shared with Haryana. Keep in mind, this is only part of the larger Punjab territory, which is also shared with Pakistan. A lot of you guys had stuff to say about Punjab. Overall, a lot of you said that Punjab is probably the most loved state in India, partially thanks to Bollywood. They got really good food, really nice people. They have the largest Sikh community in all of India. They also have the holiest site in Sikhism, the Golden Temple. And there's a ton of forts and palaces like this one. Rajasthan, capital Jaipur, the land of Rajas or kings. It's the largest state in area at 341 square kilometers. It is also one of the states that never broke up. And there are just endless forts and palaces found in this state. It has things like a camel fair. Supposedly I was told they have like the best henna artists. Keep in mind food wise they keep things very spicy and it is at about 75% of the population the most vegetarian state in India. Vegetarian kings in the sand. Sikkim, capital Gangtok. Now this is an interesting one because it kind of joined India in 1975 to kind of avoid the Chinese. It used to be its own kingdom and these people are very similar to the people of Bhutan. They can kind of generally understand each other's languages. Lots of uh, Tibetan Buddhist type of culture going on here as well. And it is as of right now the most environmentally friendly state in all of India. It is almost completely organic. As in they don't believe in using chemicals or pesticides in their agriculture. Very clean air, they love nature, and they love, uh, they're just, it's, it's kind of like the Bhutan of India. Tamil Nadu, capital yeah. Chennai. Now, if you want real, like, South Dravidian Indian culture, you come here. This is, like, straight up the southern capital of India. The main language they speak, of course, is Tamil, which is completely unintelligible to Hindi. They have so many temples, including the largest functioning Hindu temple in the world. Technically, Angkor Wat is a bigger Hindu temple, but it's no longer active, so it kind of doesn't count. Uh, I was told they are big fans of Rajnik Ant. Telangana, capital Hyderabad, the youngest state of India. They literally split up from Andhra Pradesh in 2014. I was told it's kind of like the whole, you know, Catalina Spain thing where they're like, hey, we're making a lot of money, but you guys are dragging us down. So we're going to kind of split off and make our own thing. And then Andhra Pradesh was like, no, you can't do that. And they're like, yes, we can. And we're going to take Hyderabad. They're like, no, you can't do that. And like, yes, we can make your own capital. Yeah, messy divorce. Anyway, they're also famous for Tollywood or Telugu. Hollywood and it's interesting because they still kind of retain a little bit of the Persian culture that was brought over from the Mughals and Nizams. You can find it in things like the painting and their shadow puppets. Tripura, capital Agartala. I was told, is this even India? It's like the state that very few people even know much about. It's like all sides of their state are surrounded by Bangladesh. So no shocker, they have a lot of Bangladeshi immigrants. Uh, apparently I was told they like to play horse polo. But yeah, uh, I think out of all the states, uh, they are kind of like the biggest anomalies. It's just like the mystery state. People probably come here to hide out and avoid the authorities when they're on the loose. <laughs> I'm just I don't know. <laughs> Uttar Pradesh, capital Lucknow. This is the Taj Mahal state. And it's kind of like a, oh dang, where did that baby boom come from? You guys just like exploded in population in the
the past few years, and now it is the most populous state. It's also home to Varanasi, one of the most famous cities in the world for Hinduism, Jains, and Buddhists. And uh, yeah, a lot of fertile land over here, lots of spices and agriculture happen in this state. Very key important player in all of India. You cannot have India without Uttar Pradesh. Uttarakhand, capital Dehradun. This place actually has some of the holiest sites in all of Hinduism. It has the Jim Corbett National Park, beautiful mountains. Again, I was told these people are super nice, very welcoming. And I was specifically told to tell you guys that Urvashi Ratala is from this state. West Bengal, capital. Ca I don't know her if that's a famous person. Um, I've never heard of her. Calcutta or Kolkata. They changed the spelling. This is the last state that never broke up in all of India. Technically. If you consider the fact that it broke up from East Bengal, which became Bangladesh, but yeah. These people are kind of also known for having some of the best sweets in all of India. And they're also known for having some of the best literature and academics. Some of the greatest minds from India, like this guy came from here. They're also known for being very strong devotees to Durga. Sweets and academics, West Bengal. Now we reach the Union Territories. The oh, Andaman no, and Nicobar Islands capital Port Blair. This place is known for being home to one of the last uncontacted human tribes on earth, the Sentinelese. Yeah. You yeah, are not so. allowed to visit their island. It's also home to India's only volcano. Chandigarh. Now this is interesting. It's the capital of both Punjab and Haryana, but it's also a union territory in itself. Basically, this was a planned city that was built because they gave Lahore to Pakistan. And it was kind of made to be like a model of affordable housing in India. It's a, it's a new city. Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and you. There's the interesting thing. Gujarat, like I mentioned, does not allow alcohol. Maharashtra does. So where do they meet in the middle? These union territories. These places are kind of known as like the places where both states can kind of join together and have a beer. And uh, Daman and Diu, I think it was also Portuguese, wasn't it? Yeah. Lakshadweep means a hundred islands. Basically, in a nutshell, the majority of people here are Muslim and they're very similar to the people of the Maldives. So you find a lot of atolls and a lot of people living on these narrow sand banks and they have like an island culture. The capital territory of Delhi. Keep in mind that this is a separate entity from New Delhi. But yeah, uh, this is kind of basically where all the politicians go and the worst drivers in India, I was supposedly told. And even though they are a territory, they still have their own legislative assembly. It's, it's weird. But yeah, busy people making laws, causing controversy for the rest of the country. And finally, Puducherry, capital Pondicherry. This is... Yes, yes, I've heard of this and in the India episode he also mentions in, um, and there was also something <coughs> a kind of controversial um, uh, community he told, um, he mentioned in the India episode I already reacted to and if someone may explain this to me, um, I don't know why it is controversial or what happened. So yeah, if someone knows about this, but probably many people do. The French speaking area of India. And here you can also find Auroville, the yeah. hippie village where all the people- Yes, uh, uh, maybe even explains it now, but yeah. kind of came together and they wanted to make their own utopia, but then there was a little bit of controversy, but yeah, it's, yeah look into it. But yeah. Exactly that, I mean exactly this. So if someone can explain this to me, please do. French speaking Indians. And that is that! Once again, thank you to you guys, all the Indian geography peeps that helped me out with this video by giving information. I hope I got most of it right. But yeah, in a nutshell, India has so many different types of people groups and languages and cultures and traditions and customs. It's like you can't summarize it all in one video and obviously this one didn't even scratch the surface. But for what it's worth, beautiful country and I'm so glad and honored to have done this video. Thank you, stay cool, stay tuned. Um, yeah, that's uh, this was the video. This was always my reaction. I was the most time silent, but um, uh, Yeah, if someone can explain this to me um, I was already wondering about this in the India episode and yeah um, the Indian India as um, the largest democracy in the world is interesting and um, I would very much um, like to visit India at one, at one time maybe um, of course, this depends on many things, also the money, but yeah, um, I would be interested in visiting it and yeah, let's see how this goes. Um, if um, uh, <coughs> anyone wants to subscribe and support me through this, um, I, would very be, I would be very glad and happy about this. So yeah, let's do this. Um, and next time, maybe I will react to the Russian republics. I already thought about doing this um, and yeah. See you uh, in the next video.